So I already have the unbeatable achievement. I don't have to do it. But... Hey everyone, Emmy speaking. I know why you're here. Y'all knew this was coming. After beating my last hard mode challenge, the next logical step was to see if I could beat the entirety of the Bloodstained Sanctuary, thereby getting the best ending, with the same restrictions applied to the last challenge. Right? See, here's the thing. It's not actually possible to enter the Bloodstained Sanctuary with the mask on, since having the Booster 2.0 is a requirement for even entering the Prefab House. And even if I could enter Sanctuary with the mask on, the Black Wind would bring my machine gun down to level 1, leaving me with no options to traverse through the spike-filled first floor. How do we fix that, you ask? Well, all I needed to do was set my spawn point as the first room of Sanctuary, then edit the save so that my machine gun will start at base level 3 just so I could get past it. Of course, you'd also need to make sure to set all the correct flags so that everything in the Sanctuary works as intended. So if there's anyone crazy enough that wants to try this challenge out for yourselves, I'll leave a link to the save file that I use so you don't have to mess with any sort of save editing software. Since this is a follow-up to my previous video, that means I'll be using all of the same weapons and items as last time, meaning I have to wear the Mamiga mask and not have any sort of booster equipped. One last thing I'd like to say is that while my last video wasn't made with the intention of it being a guide, this time I highly recommend using this video as a guide for anyone wanting to get through the Bloodstained Sanctuary. I feel like a lot of what's shown in this video has a lot of great tips for anyone wanting to beat the Bloodstained Sanctuary, especially those that want to try and get the Unstoppable achievement. So, with all that said, can you beat the Bloodstained Sanctuary as an Unstoppable Mamiga hero? Welcome to Hell. Before I start, take a look at the bottom right. I'll be displaying a death counter along with every death that I could find pertaining to the room that I died in. I'll be doing this so you can see all the mistakes I made that caused me to die, as well as learn what not to do so you can improve as well. With that out of the way, let's start B1. I'm sure anyone who's attempted the sanctuary has gotten past this room. It's the first one that's meant to test your skills with the booster and test its limits, but I don't have the booster. Which actually makes this room easier, believe it or not. Since I start the first room with a level 3 machine gun to get through it, I essentially have an infinite booster to use. This room is definitely the easiest of all the rooms to complete. However, that kind of overconfidence is what has caused so many deaths here. I'd either be tired and not paying attention after a good run died, or I just tried going through it too quickly. As for the XP canisters scattered about, what I like to do is use the first two on the bubbler to immediately get it up to level 3 for B2. Trust me, you'll need it. The four you see on the way to the bottom, I used to get the sword to level 2. You don't necessarily need to get it to level 2 right now, but this just makes leveling it up later easier. After crossing the final spike pit and picking up Curly, I make it to floor B2. Did you know that the witch woman, Jenko, once had a brother? His name was Balos. Like his sister, he wielded powers far beyond those of mortals. He used his magical powers to help and guide people, and the people loved and trusted him in return even more than their own king. Sanctuary B2 is... horrible. It sucks, it's RNG running hell, I hate this floor- I'm... It's fine. I'm fine. I, I'm fine. I can do this. It's just a level. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm not fine. I'm mad. I fucking hate this level. I want to grab it and throw my window and burn it like the trash it is. Okay, now that I've got that anger out of my system, this room is not that bad if you're doing normal run. Oh, oh, okay, hear me out first. When going through this room normally, even if you were to, say, jump and suddenly see a falling block right above you, you'd at least have the booster to course correct and get out of harm's way. Here though, you have no booster, so sometimes there's literally nothing you can do to avoid blocks except pray that Lady Luck is on your side. I... wait, already? Oh, come on, work, damn it! Well, uh... Guess we can't use the death counter in this room. This single stupid RNG filled room alone ended roughly 90% of my runs. I tried to count how many times I died here, but after counting 150 I realized how horrible of an idea that was. I can only guess how many times I died to this room. So how did I get through this room? 
Well, besides having some luck on your side, there are a few ways you can more consistently get through this room. As soon as I enter, I shoot the first two buttes with the machine gun, then immediately switch over to the bubbler. This is the gun I'll be using throughout the entirety of this room after leaving the safe area around the door. The bubbler is great to use as a shield, but sometimes you'll get a butte that will luckily slip through all the bubbles and kill you. To try and counter this, I use a mix of bubble shielding and shooting them all at once, as well as continuing to move slightly so that buttes that try and go after me on the ground might bounce and go above me instead. Once you defeat the last butte in the beginning, you won't have to deal with any more until you reach this hill. Once you get close enough to it, three buttes will spawn behind you and you need to take them out but if you touch the edge of the block before looking back, there will be a fourth one you can take out, further reducing how many will chase after you. Once you cross the hill, two more buttes will spawn to go after you, but if you can't get across the second hill fast enough, they won't reach you until you get to the next open area. There will be a couple of blocks here that will shield you from the falling blocks for a brief moment so you can move out of their way. At this point, depending on how far you walked, anywhere from three to seven buttes will start chasing you. Sometimes it'll just be 4 or 5 while the others get stuck in the hill area, but sometimes all 7 will come after you. If you take out a few and no more come your way, use this chance to book it to the right. By the time they get to you, you'll be far enough to create some bubble shields and deal with them, along with the few that you met before you get to the exit. As for the falling blocks, god I can only pray Lady Luck is crushing on you. For the most part, I'll try and jump over them once they reach the ground so I can get by quicker, but strictly staying to the ground for me was a death sentence a lot of the time, since there were times the block surrounded me with no way to get out. On the other hand, sometimes it felt like jumping was the direct cause of my death. Do you see this? This. How is this fair? I couldn't do anything. I should also mention that the blocks always have the lower portion of them active, meaning that if they bounce off the ground and you touch the sides of them, you'll still get insta-killed. Even if you go into the fenced area at the exit, the blocks can still hit you, so be extra careful here. If you can deal with all of that while still having the luck to get past all the blocks, congratulations, you completed the hardest part of this challenge. Yes, I am not kidding. This is the hardest part of the challenge just because it causes you to die so many times, so the amount of times you actually reach B3 and beyond is so slim. But with enough perseverance and improvising, it's finally time to go on to B3. The jealous king had Balos apprehended and thrown in prison, for his punishment was brutal and cruel. Humans can be terrible creatures indeed. Under the extreme cruelty of the torture, Balos' magical abilities finally ran wild. The king was engulfed in the swirl of magic and destroyed in an instant. In a single night, the kingdom that Balos so loved was reduced to ashen ruins. This floor introduces a few new enemies, two variants of the flying buttes, an archer and a sword fighter, and the mesas, the tanks that throw blocks at you and have lots of health. Besides the archer buttes, there's no luck involved for the rest of the floor, the reason being that archer buttes have a seemingly random time between shots, they could wait a few whole seconds, or wait only one second before shooting again, so you really have to pay attention to them. With Curly awake and shooting by our side now, things become a lot easier. She wields the Nemesis, a weapon that actually gets weaker the more you level up. It only takes 1 XP to level up too, so you would normally need to really be careful with how you use it, but this time we don't need to worry about that. Curly never gains XP, so that means her Nemesis will always stay at level 1, dealing a whopping 12 damage per shot. When you first enter, jump off the left side and take out the Sword Buttes first, followed by the 8 Flying Buttes up top. Whenever you see Buttes coming from the floor or ceiling, 8 of them will spawn, so it'll be easy to know if more will come out or not. To the left, you'll see a few Sword Buttes. They'll block your attacks until they move or jump at you, but they usually go down easily with the machine gun. Be sure to not go over the top of the hill though, as for a few steps before that, you can end up getting shot by a faraway Archer Butte. Just wait until it shoots, go past, then immediately fly up with the machine gun to figure out whether he's going to shoot forward or upward. Usually for me he ended up shooting super quickly once I went past the first arrow, so be sure to watch out for him. Kill him, then the other buttes, as well as the two mesas and two buttes on the upper platform so that you can get more XP for the sword. Once your sword reaches about here on the XP bar, switch to the fireball so you can level it up. You don't need to level up the fireball, but it just makes a section in this floor easier. Delete the destroy- I mean, destroy the delete, then stand on this block to stay out of range of the archers. Once you find an opening, jump through and take them out along with 8 more buttes in the delete after. Jump through and avoid the rollings while you take out the third delete. Up ahead's a bunch of archers so be cautious. Take out this archer first, then watch this one's pattern. Once he aims forward and shoots, see if the other archers are shooting. 
If not, fly up and take them out with a nemesis and repeat till they're all gone. Once the arrows coming from the far side of the room hit this block, jump and get onto this safe spot. Now get the fireball out and take out this Bew. Switch to the machine gun to take out this Mesa, then back to the fireball to take out this Mesa followed by the machine gun once more to take out these two buttes. For this mesa, I recommend standing at about this notch in the block to get good shots off. Once there's only two buttes, wait for them to fire and fly to them to take them out. Now either take out the eight buttes first, or take out the two remaining mesas at the bottom first. Either way is fine. Take out the delete, then stand right between these two blocks. It gives the machine gun just enough room to take out both the mesa and the butte. Step back a bit and use the fireball to take out the bottom view, and now the middle one can't shoot you because it's in the perfect position so that its arrow gets caught in the corner of the block. Make sure that you don't step past the middle of this block before doing all this, as it will cause the other three buttes to start shooting early. Once you hop down, the three buttes on the right can't hit you in time, so just land and take out the delete, and optionally one of the buttes. Watch out for the arrows and squeeze past into the next room. There will be eight more buttes here on the right, along with a swarm of buttes on the opposite side of the deletes. Just stand here and you'll be fine. The buttes can't hit you here. Once all of them are taken out, jump up to this block and take out the middle delete. As long as you stand on the right half of this block, both buttes will shoot upwards, giving you plenty of time to hover past them. Once you're on this platform, be sure to step onto the left block so that all three of the butte swarms come out at once. Just spam the machine gun and nemesis here to take them all out without any worry of them touching you. Deletes will be almost gone by the time you take out all the buttes, so once they're all gone, either wait for the right archer butte to shoot, or be patient and take them both out before proceeding. I prefer to just wait for the arrow to pass. This room is very long, so don't be afraid to be patient to get through it. There have been so many times that I wanted to get through it quickly, but that ended up causing my death. So as long as you stay calm, I think you've got this. Jenka, seeing her brother's madness, confined him to this floating island. That was the most she could do. Even as he was, she could not bring herself to kill her own brother. It was Jenka's daughter, Misery, who made Balos create the demon crown. She was subsequently cursed by the crown, forced to do the bidding of all who wear it. If the crown is destroyed, the curse is lifted. However... Once you reach Heavy Press, keep the machine gun equipped and spam that and the nemesis on it. Once in a while, take care to kill the buttes spawning in and jumping over the rolling so that you don't get overwhelmed. The boss itself only has one lightning attack, so as long as you keep in mind the timing between its shots and taking care of the buttes, you should be fine. Don't try and rush this fight if you don't need to. I just tend to try and find quick and safe ways to get through these bosses. Once you take them out, kill the remaining buttes in the room if there are any, and run for your life to the edges of the screen. Even after you kill Heavy Press, every pixel of his body will one-shot you if you touch it. So once you avoid him, jump down into the final set of rooms. If the crown is destroyed, the curse is lifted. However, the demon crown will be restored anew an infinite number of times so long as Bellus' heart still beats. That is the supreme magical power of his eternally enraged soul. It is intrinsically imbued into his evil creation, the demon crown. By this point, if you haven't gotten at least up to halfway through level 2 on the sword, use the statue room to try and get some XP. If you don't get any, that's fine. There will be plenty of chances later. This will be your last chance to rest before what's to come, so be sure to get your wits about you and press onward. Please kill my master. That is the only way misery can be freed. The only way to avoid a repetition of this tragedy. My master's name is Balos. His magic powers have gone wild. And now he cannot even die. Welcome. I am Balos. Ages ago, in fear of enduring further punishment, I allowed my magic to run wild. My magic became such that even its master's hand could not control it. As I looked on, unable to quell its fiery rage, it took from me my loved ones. My children, my dearest wife, their cries of agony soared above the flames. I could not avert my eyes, so I merely gazed upon the spectacle, laughing. Jenka sealed me away, but my magic yet rages out of control even now. Long, long have I waited waited for the one who would finally subdue my magic's fury. Now, kill me, or I shall kill you! 
For Balos' first phase, he'll start by dashing at you once on the ground, up into the air, once again to the side, and once more back into the ground, where he'll produce a bony shockwave. Be careful of this shockwave, as some bones may be left behind and catch you off guard. Once he does this dash cycle four times, he'll fly up into the air and send out lightning bolts that focus on your location. As long as you keep moving left or right while this happens, you won't get hit. He'll end this with a wave of lightning across the screen. He'll keep doing that until you beat him, and once he's done with this phase, immediately start moving over to this position here. Balos will fly into the air, a crosshair appearing over you, signaling to move out of the way. Once Balos falls back down, phase 2 will start. His first set of jumps will always be twice, then every time after that will be three times. Once he reaches the ground from a jump, he will send out shockwaves of bones like in phase 1. This is his only attack, so just be sure to give yourself plenty of time to move out of the way at the end of his attack cycle. He can only be damaged in the eyes during this phase, so using your level 2 sword here will be perfect. I can usually take him out in 4 cycles, but 5 or 6 cycles might be needed depending on how fast you can mash. Keep it up, and he'll eventually close his eyes, signaling the start of phase 3. Balos will spawn 8 mini eye cores that will rotate around him as he rides along the walls of the arena. This will be your chance to level up the sword to level 3, since you'll need it for what's to come. Once it's been leveled up, switch over to the machine gun and keep firing at his eyes till they're all closed, making sure not to get crushed by them. Once all the eyes are taken out, he'll keep riding the wall till he reaches the center of the arena. Spikes will start coming out of the floor, and the bats will go away. Once you hover up to Balos, try and stand on this exact platform. I've found this to give me the most consistent setup. When this monstrosity of a fourth form appears, immediately start using your level 3 sword on his eye cores. All of that AoE damage will be directed at his body, so this is actually one of the only bosses in the game that I'd actually recommend to not spam, as the sword will most likely end up hitting the closed eyes, rendering the sword unable to deal AoE damage. If one of the eyes falls off and starts bouncing, be extra careful when your platform reaches the bottom half of the room, as the eye cores can bounce and take you off guard. One thing that will most likely make this phase random is the archer buttes on the sides. If you see them charging up, try to avoid the arrows as best you can while also consistently hitting Balos with AoE. If everything goes well and you keep your wits about you, you'll have defeated Balos boosterless. Is what I would like to say, but all of that is so, so much easier said than done. One hit from anything and you'll have to go through the torture that's floor B2 once more. Everything needs to be done perfectly. Because one misinput, one miscalculation, and you can say goodbye to your run. So, can I do it? Balos defeated, the credits rolling, and my fancy mask still on, I'm happy to say that it is possible to beat the Bloodstained Sanctuary as an unstoppable Mamiga hero. Thank you all so much for the support on my last video. I had a blast editing it, and it means the world that you all enjoyed it. 
And now, for real this time, I think it's time I take a long, long break from Cave Story. See you all next time.